Hello there, Gamerinos and Gamerinas. Welcome to Unicorn Storm. This is Rady, and I have already wasted way too much time on this gem of a game. This is the new laundry simulator, where you just sit around all day and watch your laundry tumble around. But of course there's something to do in the game. You have to pick up dirty laundry, put it in the washing machine, wait until it's done, get it out, put it in the dryer, wait until it's done, collect it and place it on the counter. You can also pick up trash, unclog the toilet and wait, wait, what's that in the back? Well, that's new, that's fun. You know what? I'd rather spend my time playing arcade games all day than sitting in the fucking laundry. And well, that's what this game is all about. This is Arcade Paradise, where you are the new manager of your dad's old laundry and you kinda use the space in the back to open up your own arcade. So that the people who wait for their dirty clothes to get clean can spend their time and their money on some fun little, I wanted to say retro games, but this game takes place in the early 90s, so these games aren't really retro. So now you run the laundry business in the front of the store, while your customers have a blast of a time in the back of the store playing arcade games, and after a hard day's work, you collect all their quarters from the machines and deposit them in your safe. And you use your earnings from both the laundry and the arcade to buy more arcade machines. And of course, renovate the place or rent even more space to set up even more arcade cabinets. But that's not all, of course. As you can see, this game is played in first person which is a bit unusual for these sort of management tycoon games. Well, maybe that's because this isn't a tycoon game, but I will come to that. First off, the main attraction of this game, the arcade cabinets, are not just there for show, not just there to look at something while an arbitrary number slowly increases. And by that I mean your income. No, these are actual arcade machines that you can play. That's why you can run around in your store. You are your own best customer and you can play all these fantastic games yourself. And I don't think this affects your income. I believe the management simulation runs in the background. So yeah, let's not waste any time. Let's hit up one of those machines and just play one of these great old games, which aren't actual real life existing games, but more like copycats games inspired by all those classics and not so classics. But they do their job just fine. And they do employ some unique ideas. There is a Tetris-like where you don't need to fill up a row with different shaped blocks, but need to look at the number in each block. Because in that game, a block only disappears when it is part of either an horizontal or vertical row that contains exactly the amount of blocks as it's stated in its number thingy. Which works surprisingly well. Then there is this cave digger game, where you have to mine downwards through colored stones and whenever you hit part of a block, all the adjacent parts in the same color also disappear and everything that's not supported anymore falls to the ground and if it mixes with another block of the same color, they also disappear and your goal is to, well, get as far down as you can and collect a lot of gold that you need to buy upgrades to mine even further. There is a Pac-Man clone that looks suspiciously like GTA 3. There is a Match 3 cooking adventure game and a cute one at that. And wait, what? 
What's that with all the interruptions? Why is my watch beeping all the time? Oh, oh shit, yeah, the, the business in the front. Of course, the laundry. I am the manager of a laundry. Yeah, so this is happening quite often. You start up a game, you have a good run, but then your watch is beeping all the time because some of the laundry is done and needs to be dried or needs to be put on the counter or maybe the toilet is clogged. Your dad is calling to tell you what a disappointment you are. Perhaps even an ungrateful and capricious teenager like you can make it a success. And stuff like that. And I do like the feeling that results from this. Because all the laundry work is quite boring. It's just a bunch of chores and a lot of waiting around. So of course you're going to play some games in the meantime. But every time we're starting to have fun, we are reminded that we are still at work. So we rush out, do everything that needs to be done get back into the arcade, play a bit more and, well, repeat this process over and over. But again, it didn't frustrate me. It felt kinda authentic, realistic, because we aren't here on our own time. We aren't here to play. We manage this place. Of course, we can hit up a machine for a few minutes at a time. But when something breaks down, when something needs to be done, it's our job to do it. Well, not that we have to do it. No one is stopping us from just playing the whole day. And, well, I mean that quite literally. When I said that this game isn't really a management or tycoon game, I meant it. This is more of a chore simulator bundled up with an arcade-like game collection. You need to earn money to buy new machines or expand your arcade and you can tweak all your arcade machines to make the games harder or easier or more expensive or less expensive and you can increase the popularity of your arcade and need to keep an eye on stuff like garbage lying around because if there's too much litter your arcade machines are less popular at least as long as you don't clean up and you can guide your customers into playing the less popular games by placing them near the more popular games. So the logic being, if your customers are waiting in line for a popular game, they might just play this other game while they wait. Not that you see much of this. There are customers in your laundry and your arcade standing and sitting around or are actually playing the arcade games, but they are not walking around. They don't form a line on an arcade machine. It's more like whenever you're not looking, they are placed randomly around your store and they disappear when you get near them. So I guess so that they don't stand in your way. You have to suspend your disbelief a bit for this. It looks okay from afar, but yeah, there's not much simulation going on in here. Or at least not on screen. There's also not much of a management aspect. Doing the chores in the laundry nets you cash, and even that is a bit gamey and artificial. It makes sense that you collect money for doing the actual laundry, but you also get quite a lot of cash for picking up chewing gum or picking up the litter and throwing it away or unclogging the toilet. I don't think you should be paid for doing that because your customers don't care about throwing out the trash. I mean they do care but not in a monetary sense. I guess it would have been better or more akin to a management game if your store loses popularity for not doing the chores. And well, the game kinda does this with the temporary arcade popularity. So that people don't want to play your games if your place is dirty. But okay, you run around, do the chores and earn a lot of money. While your arcade generates money on its own that you just collect. Which still sounds like a tycoon game. But there are no running costs. You don't have to pay rent. You don't have to pay for electricity, you don't have to pay your staff because there isn't any staff. 
Well, you can employ an assistant manager, but you don't do this to an actual hiring process. But that guy is an upgrade that you pay with foreign currency. Because now it gets complicated. So I called this game a chore simulator and well, that's kinda it. You have all these tasks every day. Washing and drying the laundry, picking up trash, unclogging the toilet, cleaning up all the chewing gum, and then there are like daily tasks. Because your dad wants to keep tabs on you and so he kinda has daily tasks for you, but he also rewards you for completing them. And in the story, in the very light story of this game, your dad thinks you are pursuing an honest laundry business. And he isn't very fond of the idea that you might want to open up an arcade. So you kind of do this behind his back. So his tasks are things like cleaning up this number of chewing gums, collecting this many pieces of litter, or just go for a walk to clear your head for some reason. And then there are tasks like get a certain high score in this game, play so many different arcade games, play a game for a certain amount of time, only use a certain weapon in a game. So I guess your dad is completely aware of what you're doing and he just wants to see if you can truly stand on your own two feet. Or maybe it's just stupid game logic. But yeah, from your laundry and arcade business you earn dollars that you need to buy more stuff. New arcade machines and the like. But for all the tasks you complete, your dad wires you some pound sterling. That you can only use on some, I guess, British websites to buy certain stuff that functions as upgrades. Like a new pair of shoes that lets you sprint or some glasses that let you interact with objects from farther away. Or like the assistant manager because he wants to be paid in pound sterling. And it seems all the music from your jukebox consists of only British bands because those are also only bought with British pounds. Yeah, I don't really like how this game calls its currencies or presents its systems I mean, it could have just been management experience. And you use that management experience to unlock certain upgrades. Like instead of buying new shoes, I am so used to run back and forth within my own business that I get now the actual ability to run. Stuff like that. But yeah, it's fine. It's all a bit gamey, but I mean, what should I expect from a game about games, about an arcade? And while this isn't really a management game, I mean, it tries to appear like one, but it isn't really, you don't really manage your arcade. You just put stuff in there and wait until you get more stuff to play around with. But as such, it is fine. It's a lot of fun. It's fun to pretend to run your business and it's fun to play those hilarious games. They are not the greatest games ever made, but they do their job. And they do invoke a bit this nostalgic feeling. I wish that the whole arcade was a bit more bustling, that more people were running around in there. Maybe this happens later in the game when the arcade is a bit bigger, but so far it's a lot of fun. I enjoy playing these games, I enjoy going for the high score or reaching certain goals inside those games to make the arcade cabinets more popular so you can actually affect the popularity of your games and by that your income by just playing the game and cheating a lot. I mean, if the task is that I have to concede a certain amount of goals in air hockey, well, I'll just do it myself. It's faster that way. All the games are a lot of fun for what they are, even though there are some glitches both in the arcade games as well as in the 
actual game around them. It's a bit weird that walking sideways is way faster than walking forward. And I can only guess that it is because of the sprint ability you get later and that the devs forgot to turn down your sideways walking speed before you get to sprint. Or maybe there is just no reason for it. It's sometimes hard to select objects to interact with because there is some other object in the way and your menus are a bit finicky to control because sometimes your mouse cursor, your finger or whatever you are pointing with is jerking around or it's hard to see when you actually select something, especially with the rather cool looking mouse cursor on your desktop PC that makes it hard to see when you can actually click on something. Sometimes the mouse just freezes up and you have to press some buttons on the keyboard before it works again. Sometimes the keyboard doesn't work. So there are a good number of small glitches in the game. Nothing game breaking so far, but yeah, a bit more polish would be nice. If you are a child of the 90s or maybe even of the 80s and you want to live the dream of owning your own arcade more as your own plaything than a business, then you can have a lot of fun with this game. Just don't expect an intricate business simulation or a fun tycoon game like Roller Coaster Tycoon for example. This is a game where you pretend to work while you're actually sneaking away all the time to play video games. And isn't that what we all wish we could do in our actual workplaces? So with that, I wish you the greatest of days. That's it from Rady, and I hope to see you again on the next game.